Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back to another Logging from Scratch episode. Uh, so, last time we were playing, we had just started loading up these trucks and bringing them back. So, uh, I think we're just going to continue doing some loading. I also... I think I said something about processing. I think there was a pile I had to process. Maybe I was bunching. Ah, I can't remember. Let's do some loading. How about that? So, yeah, we still, uh, we still got lots of wood to pick up from this block. Actually, I'm going to turn this little light on. Get some life going here. Uh, ba -dum -bum -ba -ba -dum -ba -dum. So we have lots of uh, different piles. Again, this block is getting pretty muddy, so traversing around it is going to become pretty tricky once we get these bigger loads on here. So let's keep rolling and see how much we can fit on these bad boys. Bloop, bloop, bloop. There we go. Bloop. Oh, oh, come on. I was so close. So close. So I always start... We st um, started working on a new map. Uh, well, it's not new. I've been working on it for a little while. Um, this one has, like, a port area. I'm trying to figure out a way to make the cell point so you can load it into the bow of a boat as one of the cell points. I don't know how well that's going to go. I might just have to build a... build a rack on top of the boat or something that you load up. It's kind of lame, but the way Giants built this new frickin' cell point system is just ludicrous compared to the last one. So the last one made sense. This one does not make sense. And doesn't work in the ways that you'd want it to, which is really frustrating. I do like the idea that they set it so that the cell points are a trigger now, so you can, like, sell them once the wood's on the ground instead of it just disappearing. But those disappearing ones actually um, gave us lots of options to make you know, automated mills and cool stuff like that. Now we don't have that ability, so kind of a pain in the butt there. But yeah, so the new map is going to be called Port Murray or Port Murray. If you don't say it like Murray, you're not allowed to download it. That's how you do it. So yeah, it's going to be called Port Murray. And uh, it's going to be... I'd say the terrain-wise, it'll be similar-ish to this map, but maybe just a little bit more... Um, Coastal. Trees will be pretty much the same. I haven't done a lot with those on this one. I'm saving the tree changing stuff for the do-it-yourself map, which is going to be the one after it. I've also had lots of requests to make a very thick map with trees, like very thick, dense forests, which we can do. But the problem is when you get denser forests or denser trees in the forests, then um, you do need to make smaller maps because the FPS just can't handle having 20 gazillion trees on a map. So... That's something people are going to have to realize when we do um, we do, do the deed. Is that it will have to be a little bit lesser. Oh, we can get up on this nice little bench. Dope. All right. Let's see if I can get this wood actually over to this pile. That'd be handy. Let's walk it on over here. But yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to do something a little different. But um, So yeah, as for the dense maps... Uh, we're going, um, I have uh, a map already in mind. I'm going to make a smaller map, but there's going to be a lot of trees in a very compact area. So it's going to be a lot of testing that has to go forward to see if that's even possible. But especially people who are bunching. I don't know if you guys ever played my older maps on 2015, but some of them maps got super thick in the tree department. So you'd be like cruising around and then suddenly you have like this patch with like a tree every second thing. It was fun because that's where you could really make roads. Like in this this one, like you see how sparsely the trees are kind of laid out. Um, it's really easy to make roads because you just drive around where you don't want where you don't want a tree. But if you get a map where you get like a solid clear cut line of trees, you have to plan your road. If you ever go watch uh, my super early versions of uh, multiplayer on Farming Simulator 2015, I believe it was. I think it was 15. Um, you can see some of those areas that we logged, especially on the winter maps, where we have to build these literally intricate roads and stuff to try to get the wood out. It's so cool. Because bunching actually takes a long time to get that wood, because there's so many trees to cut. And I usually use, like, the tiniest, crappiest trees to make it more difficult. So, so the next map I'm working on uh, is definitely a do-it-yourself map. It's just going to be this big colostomy of trees all over the place. And um, it's going to be very thick. But it'll be a very small map. It'll be like one quarter of this map, if I can even pull that off. 
Everybody, I'm sure, will be like, hey, why is your map so tiny? Make it bigger. Well, the problem is I would love to make a giant map with the most lush, thickest forests I could get my hands on. But unfortunately, I would say 80% of the people out there watching this or playing this would not be able to play it. And if they could, it would be a miserable experience because there's no way in hell you'd be able to get 60 frames a second. So I don't want that. I want something that works. Every developer in the world wishes they could have unlimited ability, like without limits. Because if we didn't have limits, we could make the most amazing things. If we didn't have limits, I could just make this whole map so much thicker and better and same size, no problem. But the game has limits. So as a developer, you are limited by those limits. And it makes it a little bit more tricky to get the concept that you want uh, portrayed the way you want it. So instead, you gotta make these little sacrifices to adhere to the rules, but yet at the same time, find a way to shape it so it matches your vision. I'd say that would be the... That would be the way I would put it, anyway. I started watching Bob Ross again. Watching Bob Ross with my, uh... With my map building has just always been such a luxurious experience. Something about Bob Ross's words and wiseness and just very calm demeanor that really makes things fun. And it's just nice to listen to him. And you know what? A lot of what he's saying when he's painting those painting paintings and giving advice to artists, a lot of that applies to things like I'm doing, like map making. Where he's talking about happy little trees and put a tree over here and the way that, you know, he'll explain how light blends better at further distances on trees or, you know... Whatever the case, all that stuff he's telling you can be applied to pretty much any kind of art ever. Whether you're a photographer or a video game designer or a map maker or level kind of guy or texture artist or modeling guy, you know, all of that stuff that he's talking about totally can be applied to the that kind of stuff. And I, I think that's kind of cool. Kind of cool, pretty inspiring. That's why I like listening to him. He's just a peaceful dude who's found a way to live peacefully. I think that's what we're all looking for in the end, isn't it? Maybe. I'm sure some of us would love to just live in chaos for the rest of our lives. <clears throat> but it's 2019, so I think we're all pretty much living in chaos of our lives right now. <laughs> as much as I'm intertwined with technology and video games, and trust me, I am, you know, says the guy sitting here with joysticks drilled into his chair and three 40-inch monitors, or TV screens as my monitors, um, I can tell you I am very much in technology. But once in a while, I always get these chaotic thoughts of like, man, I should really just take a step back from this. I think we're, we're so stressed out from our, you know, f from our phones telling us notifications and, you know, our computers at work and Facebook and, you know, all of it combined, and tablets, god, tablets are known, pretty much the same as phones, but we're so interlinked into this stuff that we don't even have lives outside of our little virtual lives anymore, and it's really bizarre. I think, uh, I think we all need to have, like, technology days or something, where we just, all technology in the world gets turned off for, like, a couple days or something. Actually, that'd probably cause riots and fires and murders, but, you know... The idea, anyway. If you ever get the opportunity to just go for a weekend somewhere, whether it's a fishing trip with a friend or, uh, you know, a kayaking trip or a tenting trip, camping, whatever, I'd highly recommend it because I've done it a few times now where I, I will turn my cell phone off when I get there. I will keep it with me, you know, in case of emergencies. I'm not saying be stupid and leave it at home. Um, keep, your, keep your cell phone for case of emergency or whatever. But turn it off. Just turn it right off. Unless you have someone at home with your kids babysitting or something and you need to have it on, put it in the most basic mode possible and don't check statuses, don't check your updates, don't check your work email. Just stay completely clear from it. And it's quite amazing the, uh, the difference it makes. You kind of get like a little bit of a weird uh, effect where you're like constantly looking for your phone and you're like, oh. Where'd I put my phone? Or you, like, reach for your pocket unexpectedly thinking you're going to check 
something you're like oh yeah i should check my and then you're like oh and it's really trippy and it's almost freaky because i remember growing up i mean i'm 30 years old now so i guess i'm an ancient old geezer um i remember growing up we i never like we never had cell phones that wasn't a thing probably not till i was like 16 17 it became kind of a thing not really Actually, i don't want to put that much wood on there we kind of stretch for the stars there let's get like a couple pieces but yeah when i was like yeah 16 or 17 is when it first started becoming a little more popular but still people weren't in it like they are now but to think that we've evolved to the point where it's like oh my god i'm anxious because i don't have my phone or oh my god where you know how do i check my status or i can't google this what am i gonna do oh my god ah. it's just funny that we've uh we've kind of gotten to that state but that's uh good old human evolution for you all right, so let's see if we can get this thing out and across. So this will be our second load, I believe. Whoops. Oh no, Have we high centered it. There we go. Okay, you know what? We're gonna take the easy route because I don't think I'm gonna make it up this hill. No, don't wanna even try. We're gonna scoop down here. There we go. Get over this bouncy ass road. Oops, we just ran into the burn pile. Well still a burn pile so we're good <laughs> here let's go first person I just find it slightly easier to drive in first person maybe not like night and day difference but it definitely helps me let's see if we can get over this bridge come on Buddha I'm actually gonna go to this view because this view actually makes my life a lot easier when I'm driving over this bridge Nice, that's actually well played, hey? Stayed pretty even. Yeah, we're getting good at this. All right, so now this load, we can literally bring to the mill. I guess we'll just always have one sitting there. This load we can bring to the mill because we're going to have to pick up a new trailer. So let's get this sucker all the way over there. What is that? It's a buncher head? Oh, it's a power clam. I was like, what the heck is that? I was like, it's aliens. They've dropped a pod on my map somewhere. That's where we side side jump into like an alien episode. Ah, <laughs> uh, we could do it. It'd be just weird though, wouldn't it? I always thought of turning, uh, doing... We actually almost did one, but I couldn't get the people together. We were going to do a mini, um, like a logging TV show kind of thing but like in this game filming it and have like scripted stuff and like have uh, I guess what would be the closest like red versus blue kind of thing I guess like the Halo series you know where they just use the characters I totally had like scripts written out for it because in the past I actually I've written um, like a couple scripts and we had a series me and my buddies um, it was called I Always Wanted to Be a Cop which was basically just this uh, this funny little uh, thing where it was uh, a bunch of there's two guys, I guess, a new guy and then a Canadian uh, RCMP guy or RMCP because we didn't want the copyright. <laughs> um, yeah, basically just going around being stupid and doing stuff is actually pretty funny. I think it's still on uh, the Internet. So if you guys are really bored, go look up. I always wanted to be a cop. And me and my buddies had such a hilariously fun time doing this series. I think we got three episodes out. Two, three. Three episodes. One actually involved logging, just to uh, make it different. I remember that. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And I had friends from, like, all over the place. Because I was, I, I mean, I was terrible. I'm terrible at Flash. Like, I'm not an artist. But I made it pretty uh, pretty fun, pretty realistic. And we had, a, we had a darn good time doing it. But doing that, I was like, man, I had such a fun time and I missed it. Like, I really wanted to get that experience again but flash is such a slow way to do it like you have to spend hundreds of freaking hours in that program to get you know your characters animated and each frame synced up with the sound and oh god it takes so long like it's brutal um i'm more of a move quick creative like i want to i want to try to get things rolling because the ideas are fresh in my head and i see them in a way that i want to do it so i just jump on it when that idea is there and i just go 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 when i run with it and uh, that's usually worked out the best for me. But in Flash, it's really hard to uh, 
hard to move quick. You can storyboard as much as you want, but to actually bring it into action, um, it does take a lot of work, especially if you're slow and a newbie like me. I imagine somebody who's really good at it can probably give her, but... Anyway, so I always had that in mind of how much I missed it, and I was like, oh, man, I would love to get back into doing cartoons again and doing, like, storyboards and scripts, and, like, I loved writing scripts and, like, comedy scenes and just scenarios, and it was pretty fun, but... Yeah, we, we had kind of an idea set up for this one where we were going to do sort of a funny little logging series um, where I was going to make, like, machines for each of the characters, that kind of thing. It, I think it would have been pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually going to go... I'm going to bring this... I have a funny feeling we're never going to ever be able to uh, get this one load out because we'll constantly be back and forth. So I'm going to actually drop this load back at the base there, too. And then we'll come back and hook onto that one. So yeah, we were uh, we were gonna do something with the whole, you know, logging red versus blue cartoon script thing, but um, I just couldn't get all the people on the same page that I wanted to uh, do it. And then the, it becomes a logistical issue of uh, you know who's got good enough mics to do voice acting to make it decent and who doesn't, and then who's committed enough to do it and yeah. Cause I've done lots of uh, lots of plays and lots of voice acting kind of stuff over the last I don't know ten years. And it's always been so much fun to like sing and be in plays and do all this like you know crazy creative stuff. But then to be able to create your own thing and bring it to life is uh, a whole different ball game. It's so fun, so rewarding. And that's kind of I mean kind of what we're doing with this series, I guess. I mean. It's not scripted, it's not a play, it's not set up, it's, you know, we're just basically me logging and talking to you guys, but um, I was thinking one day in the future of doing sort of a, something that isn't um, just kind of boring, run-of-the-mill, kind of like this, like something where it was with characters and it did have a story, something to, like, be interested in, right? So... Maybe one day. I'll think about it. And if I can figure out a way to do it that's not too depressing and weird, I will probably come up with it. I actually really like what um, Daggerwin actually started doing with his stuff with the whole, uh, like, the role-playing element where he just kind of got into the story and did his own thing. It's kind of like telling a, telling a book. For the longest time, it was hard for me to, like, get into that kind of mindset. But I was... Uh, I was thinking about it recently, and I was just like, oh, well, I mean, I'm sure lots of people think it's stupid, and I'm sure lots of people think it's totally interesting, so you just have to not be afraid to do it and jump in and just have a fun time, right? It's just breaking that threshold of like, okay, guys, this is silly, and then breaking the threshold of being like, all right, I'm into this now. That's how I get with Dungeons & Dragons. I'm kind of always like, I wonder if I ever played that with my buddies. I was always like kind of half in, half out. Well, some of my buddies were so into it, they were like, they were their character. They were so into it. And I was always like, yeah, I can pretend to be my character, but I never really, you know, got into that character. And I kind of always wanted to uh, kind of get into that side of myself where I could, you know, act out stuff. Just like I did in school with plays and stuff. Just become the character. That's where, that's where the real fun comes from. Or from Master of Disguise. Become another person. So, I don't know. Maybe one day. Maybe it would be really funny. Or maybe it would be lame. I don't know. I think the problem is we, as creators, we, we uh, overthink this kind of stuff. We're like, oh man, well people will think it's dumb. Or people will think I look stupid. And then, you know, it's just like, at the end of the day, who really cares? You know, some the people who enjoy it will enjoy it. The people who hate it will hate it. I'm sure it's the same with all of our videos that we have right now, you know? Some people... I'm actually going to pull this over here. Um, some people probably love the videos that we do on YouTube and the stuff that we do, you know? I know lots of guys love these videos that we do, you know? Totally. Like, just doing this, what I'm doing right now, BSing with you guys, playing with the machines, no real story element, just having a chat while we're accomplishing a goal. That... You know, it can be pretty interesting, I guess. But, uh... Some guys want more. Some people want a story. 
And then some people just want time lapses. <laughs> some people don't want to uh, don't want to hear anyone talk. They just want to listen to time lapses with some some corny music. And that's totally cool, man. Everybody's got their gig. I uh, I don't know what I like on YouTube. I like discovery. I like uh, surprise. I think that's what always gets me. Like, oh, we discovered this new area. We're going in for the first time. You get to watch. <gasps> that kind of stuff is fun. But then again, I think that's fun, and other people look at it and go like, dude, you're crazy. That's so stupid. So there's a wide world of personalities and people out there, and you just got to figure out what, uh, what you are and what you want to do. And then if you want to entertain the other personalities by giving it a shot, why not? So with that being said, um, you never know what's coming down the pipe for us especially series-wise, it's always potential for something happening. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to close it at that. So if you guys like the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe. Don't forget it. And if you're in the bush, don't forget to hug a tree. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.